Hi, I'm Ultimate01, and this is a brief walkthrough of the features in Eschaton 0.7. Alright, to start with, let's look at the Plugins Preference Panel. We've got the Plugin Folder Access Order. This is the order in which it searches through the different plugin folders. You can have multiple plugin folders, unlike before, and you simply drag them around, and it will search from top to bottom going through, looking for what plugin. If it doesn't find one, it will tell you in the meta editor that it doesn't have a plugin for that. So I'm going to show you what happens when you add a new plugin folder, like this one here. It's got an enter.end. I'm going to drop it in the plugins folder, right there. Go to preferences, and there it is. I'm going to drive that to the top so it shows first. And that's how that works. Down here, you've got the preferred plugin type. That will show either entity style or HMT style. That's because each plugin folder can hold both types in there. So it will search through each folder, looking to see if there's a plugin match in the meta you're editing. And then if it finds both types, it will pick whichever you indicate preferred. Show hidden is an option that you'll rarely see. It's basically just showing data that plugin writers might or might not know about. Usually don't have to worry about that. Over here, we've got organized by tag class and organized by name. This one you're probably familiar with. It displays all of the tag classes and within those it shows all of the tags. Organized by name splits it by the names. So you might have, say, characters, cyborgs, things like that, all in many tiered folders. People who use HEK are going to be used to that gorilla. That's how it organizes its tags. I'll show you in a minute. Bitmaps. Explicit bitmap is an option that allows you to designate a certain bitmaps.map file to always be used as opposed to it just searching for the bitmaps.map file in the same folder as the map that you're editing. I'm not going to bother with that right now, but it is a useful feature if you only want to be editing a certain bitmaps file. Over here you've got scrolling controls and class controls. Class controls are an update of the standard Eschaton control interface. I like it. It's fast. It's clean. You don't have to know how a tag works to find a certain type of control that you want to edit. Scrolling controls, a lot of Windows users are going to enjoy. It displays tags in exactly the same way as HMT. It lines them all up for scrolling. Very nice looking. A little heavy on the memory though. Border controls by offset is an option for scrolling. And what it does is it orders the controls as they appear in the meta. As opposed to with it checked off, it orders them as they appear in the plugin. Some plugin writers may do this because uh, they might not name all of their variables, so they'll have like one, two, or three in there. And if you order it by offset, it might screw it up. So, let's show you what that looks like. This is by name, so it has it showing all of these different folder levels and dot biped. This is what a scrolling control looks like. Very nice. Again, I'm not a total fan of it because of how much data there is that you have to scroll through. Going back to tag class and class controls. I'll show you how we edit some of this. So first, let's get into the biped. Bitmasks, straightforward. Easier now, they're checkboxes in a list box. You don't have to bother with selecting and then pressing flip bit. If it's checked, it's checked. If it's not checked, it's not in use. Very straightforward. Dependencies. You've got your tag class and you've got the actual file. Very simple to use. Loan IDs are exactly the same way similar to a reference swapper. You can't even tell that there's a loan ID, but they're actually there. You don't get the screwed up tag classes. Um, another nice feature is dependencies now use 16-byte swaps. So for you demo models, modders out there, uh, it's just as powerful as a hex 16-byte swap. It'll be uh, joiner friendly, and you won't have all the problems you do. Nice feature is if you double click on your selected dependency, it actually opens that up right there. Very nice. 
We've also got floats, you know, sim precision, floating point numbers, simple to edit, integers, same thing except they're ints as opposed to floating points. Enums, also known as IDs, you select your option out of this drop menu. A lot easier than having to go through a list box and selecting it with a button. Strings, well this one doesn't actually have proper strings, so I'll get into that in a second. Colors, you got your sliders for each of the different channel values and the color picker dialog. E simple to use. Uh, the answer plugin that I have has a few extra things. For example, reflexives. This unit's reflexive. Each chunk, you can see its name is actually shown. This is an option you're not going to see a lot, but the plugins that do have it implemented, they're very nice to work with. Uh, there's a few other things. Strings, of course. Very straightforward, easy to understand. In animations, there's a particular editing interface that you might not be familiar with. It's called an index. Now what this is, is it refers to a chunk in another reflexive. So for example, this one. This index in B driver enter for sounds refers to the sound references reflexive up here. And it says chunk one. So B driver enter uses a sound in chunk one. So let's look at sound references chunk one. It's just got a dependency sound, so it means it uses this dependency. And that's a feature that's very powerful but you probably won't see used a lot. These are just some of the basic editing features of Eschaton. Hope you enjoy them.